In this video, we are going to discuss and define differential one forms. A differential one form, whoops. So sometimes we drop the word differential for conciseness. Alpha on a manifold Rn is a function which takes each point in Rn to an element of the dual space to the tangent space um, of Rn at that point. So this is a little bit confusing because we haven't actually defined, so, so alpha is a function from Rn to something, and we haven't actually defined the space that alpha is defined in. So remember um, the tangent bundle Tm, which is the union, um, so here let's just think about this as Trn, union over points in Rn of the tangent space um, to Rn at that point. So there's actually something, this is the tangent bundle, There's actually something called the cotangent bundle, Tp star Rn, which is, or sorry, not Tp star, and just T star Rn, which is the union over points in Rn of Tp Rn stars. And we call these the cotangent. Cotangent space to Rn at P. And we sometimes also denote um, it by just putting the star inside and not having any brackets. Um, and elements are called covectors. So vectors are in Rn, covector, or sorry, in Tp Rn, co uh, covectors are in Tp star Rn. Okay, so um, so really what's happening is alpha is a function from Rn to the cotangent bundle T star Rn. So that means that at any point P, um, and instead of, we sometimes denote um, alpha at a point P by alpha at P or just alpha with a subscript P. This is a linear, um, oh sorry, not to Rn, just to R a linear functional from Tp and Tprn to R. So what this means is that if, um, so if I plug in two different um, vectors in Tprn and then apply alpha, that's the same thing as applying alpha and then plugging and then adding. So we're going to use um, the notation dxi at the point P or dxi at P to denote the basis of Tp star Rn, which is dual to um, the basis, um, just the standard basis of Tp Rn. So the one, um, the E sub i's were, are, or equivalently e sub i at p or d by uh, df or sorry just d by df xi at p so these both are sort of what we think of as the standard basis of the tangent space to rn at p um, and we also sometimes write um, one forms so if a one form um, alpha is equal to, at P is equal to, say, like um, some linear combination. So like A times DX1 uh, at P plus B times, instead of doing X1 and X2, let's just do, let's just do Y times DY at P. Um, then we can also write alpha of P as the matrix A, B, A comma B. So some row matrix um, or one by N matrix A, B. And this generalizes to higher dimensions, right? Because the idea is that um, it's a linear linear map 
from TPRN to R. Um, notice also that if we vary the point P, vary P, um, so say we can get a function on Rn. So if V sub P is a vector field on Rn, i.e. it's a choice of um, vector. So remember V is going to be, so instead of the subscript actually, V is a uh, function from Rn to Trn, where V sub P, um, which is an uh, V at, evaluated at a point P is always going to be an element of TPRN. So if we vary P, then alpha at V is now a function from Rn to R because the point P just goes to alpha at P applied to V at P. So there's a special type of one form um, which we get from functions. So this might seem kind of backwards because we sort of undid this process before, but we can define the differential of a function f from rn to r is defined by df at a point p um, applied to a vector v at p is the directional derivative of f at the point p in the direction of v. Um, and this defines a one form on Rn. So uh, one thing to note, if I let f be a coordinate function, x sub i, then um, d, uh, so remember dvp at f, is just d, um, d of the function f, so dxi at p applied to the vector vp. So this is the row matrix um, dxi by dx1 at p, etc., all the way out to dxi by dxn at p applied to the column vector vp. So it'll be some, you know, v1 through vn at p. So, but d by dx i, if x i is not the coordinate x1, then this is just going to be zero, right? So all of these are going to be zero except for um, a one in the ith place. So really what's going on is that, um, so this is dx i at p of vp. And dxi at p of vp is equal to just vi, right? It's just the ith component of v sub p because when I do this product, I'm just going to pick out the ith part of v. So what this is telling me is that if xi is the coordinate function, I think I undid something. Yeah, if xi is the ith coordinate function, on Rn, then dxi is equal to dxi. So that <laughs> seems kind of silly, but on the left-hand side, I think of it as the coordinate function. And on the right-hand side, I think of the entire dxi. So this is the differential of the coordinate function. So the differential in this, in this uh, sense of the coordinate function xi. On the right-hand side, I think of it as dxi as um, the ith element of the basis dual to the standard basis of Rn. Sorry, not of Rn, but of T um, of Tp Rn. And um, notice that when we want to write df at p of vp. This is, again, using the expansion in terms of the differential. This is just d by df at xi, or sorry, at x1 at the point p times v1 
all the way out to df, dxi, uh, sorry, dxn at p times vn. And uh, noticing that vi is just dx1 at the point p of uh, vp, et cetera. This is just equal to, so this tells me that no matter what v sub p I plug in, I'm going to get that df at p is equal to dx1 at p um, times df dx1 at p all the way out to dxn at p times df at dxn at p. <laughs>